Hi everyone, uh, this is Christopher Salata, co-founder of Peace Accelerators, and right now I'm sitting with Patrick Ferlati, yeah. Ferlati yeah. Um, who is the founder of Global Mana yeah. and also of Projects for Good as well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. And uh, so we met, um, we're at our day right now, the American Renewable Energy Institute Day, and there's so many dynamic people really devoting their life to getting the planet back on track and um, achieving homeostasis. But what's neat about what Patrick's doing, Projects for Good, is it's kind of a platform that can allow all of these different um, organizations to build off of, to kind of sponsor and raise funds for their organization. Um, and, and so I want, I'm gonna ask Patrick about a few of your different projects, but um, one, uh, yeah, tell us a little about Projects for, uh, for Good and where, where it incepted and, and where it's going. It's, it's rather new. Yeah, yeah, well essentially I started a charity and I knew how difficult it was to fundraise and I wanted to create a place where people didn't have to hire attorneys and create websites, they could just create a page and message, experience people to be inspired to then post projects. And I realized that a lot of these grassroots projects needed to scale. And so I'd like to see a lot of these grassroots projects that prove their, their solution to their challenge to then sit back as a facilitator and inspire other people to go out in the world and create and upload projects. And so essentially I built a very complicated website that's like LinkedIn meets uh, Upwork meets Indiegogo. So we have this you know, crowdfunding aspect, but we also can offer a job to service providers that could offer their service or goods. And we have an affiliate marketing channel to sell products for projects. And essentially I see that all these sustainable development projects should be on one platform that allows all these people to be inspired to have these kind of systems that can move the world into these sustainable projects that uplift them and give them more natural resources so they can have a better quality of life. Wow, yeah. so beautiful. And and so I've been on there a little bit, and this just launched, I yeah. mean, what, two, a week, two weeks ago? Because we're a week out of beta. A week out, and you've yeah. already, you're getting sponsorship on multiple projects. Oh yeah, big time projects, yeah. you know. And what I see, you know, I'm working with Black Lives Matter, and I, and I think, and I'm also working to remove the landmines in Vietnam. So and awesome. I'd like to take some of the first projects as like, let's in the world uh, come to terms with our karma, you know. I mean, it's essentially, Americans um, were involved in bringing slaves to this country, and then at the end of the day, they didn't have any money or resources to own land, and they ended up in these ghettos, and so they have all of these problems and drug addictions and stuff, and they don't have natural resources, and people aren't really ready to step up and say, look, this is kind of our fault too. How do we really help these people that, you know, they're Americans too. They fight and die for our country, you know, and they want to, we need to work together and we need to overcome the karma mm -hmm. that we've created and compounded issues. Um, and we need to bring them technologies to empower them and bring up their quality of life and heal these communities that are riddled with drug addiction problems and stop the violence. You know, another one of our projects is gaining trust in the communities to remove the guns off the street. Mm -hmm. Trust with the guns, the people that own the guns and the police, no questions asked, just let's just get the guns off the street, you know, mm -hmm. stop the violence, you know, let's stop the oppression, let's try to make a world a better place, come to terms with the karma, you know, with the landmine project, a lot of these landmines have been neglected, they're still there, and children are dying every day from landmines. They ch chase a soccer ball, they get blown up, and the, the land is held hostage, but the politics that put those landmines down is not dealt with. And even 20, 30, 40 years after these conflicts, people still don't want to understand why those landmines are in the ground. They're not coming to terms with the karma, and they're not coming to work to remediate this problem and I believe that we need to talk about the karma and we need to come to terms. I mean the North Vietnamese have invited us to come to Vietnam and to turn on our web platform with their financial service partner and to work in a partnership that bring Americans who care to remove these landmines and to increase their GDP with sustainable development projects and so I see that facing what people don't want to talk about is really the first step in solving the world's most complicated problems. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I, I, I listened to that presentation today, and it's um, it's wild that those are even still there. And like you said, I mean, children are children are, are dying every day. Um, I I want to ask a little bit about um, 
you've, you've worked with multiple projects, Global Mana, and then you said you also ran a charity, and then you're now you're doing projects for good. Mm -hmm. um, are those all? Are, is your charity still running, or is this where you're putting most of your focus right now? Or, or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the charity Global Mana has the film which won an advertising award. Wow. Uh, recently called Congrats. Carbon Negative, wow. and we showcased that film here at our day. And you yeah. can go to pro, uh, globalmana.org to see the film Carbon Negative, and it's an incredible film about the reality of sucking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere to avoid catastrophic climate change. Yeah. And I believe that carbon dioxide could also solve a lot of agricultural problems. I'd like to put the carbon dioxide direct air capture on the platform as an affiliate partnership mm -hmm. to then inspire projects to do these algae soil biofertilizer remediation projects because what's happened in the industri in the commercial agricultural world is that regular plants can't grow very well uh, in in these fields that have all their nutrients and minerals extracted and they just keep adding these nitrates which end up causing water pollution and you know with the runoff killing and hurting the marine environment mm -hmm. and so what we need to do is sequester carbon dioxide grow algae instead of these harmful products and additives to the soil we need to use this algae to remediate soils mm -hmm. so that we don't have a dependence on genetically modified food that has to be used with chemicals which are causing cancer mm -hmm. the cancer epidemic is because our food system is completely tainted and the world needs sustainable development projects, the world needs healing, the world needs us to come to terms with the reality of the karma and realize that the technologies exist but they're not getting scaled properly and the, and the technologies can only be used in projects where the communities are involved mm. and so they're not necessarily businesses, these projects improve the quality of life and, they need, and it's all about communities coming together and essentially providing their own food and energy and resources in their own communities and so they're less dependent on big commercial organizations. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and, and I can tell, um, as you told me the other day, that your background is chemical engineering or, or chemical... Mm -hmm. uh, or, 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 yeah. I mean? Well, I grew up in a laboratory. My, own, my grandfather was um, a chemist and he invented um, a number of things including ballpoint pen ink uh, and stationary glues but I and also he was a pioneer in understanding um, um, how hydrogenation worked and he was one of the first people to speak out on hydrogenation and how using this additional hydrogen in the uh, food preservative world would cause health effects that were horrible mm. and your body can't process Mm. hydrogenated oils very mm. well and, and it, you know even though it would make cookies and peanut butter be able to last for 15 or 20 years mm. you know uh, it's just not good for our body and causes people obesity problems mm. and diabetes problems and so mm. um, the problem I see in the challenge facing the world with our population is you know how do you how do you deal with the problems of the commercial um, food supply and the, the answer to that is to recreate our food supply in our communities and to use these technologies available to scale them up and, and give people opportunities they otherwise would never have. And these opportunities in these underprivileged and disenfranchised communities um, will increase the GDP, give them jobs, create better food, make them healthier, and create a better world. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Wow. So. So Global Mana also produced uh, Carbon Negative. Right? Yeah, so Global saying? Mana is the charity. Wow. Um, and I still manage Global Mana. And right now we're looking to raise two and a half million dollars to make a 90 minute feature. Uh, we had... This is the sequel or this well, is... Well, we're trying to add more scientists than just Graciela. Cool. We want to make a diverse, um, uh, you know, more scientists, mm -hmm. a longer film. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to tell the story. Mm -hmm. The world doesn't understand the global warming phenomenon because it's a clear uh, gas. It's, you can't see it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you tell people about climate change, oh God, this is horrible, they're like, well, I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to let people understand it and also let people know there's a solution. And we yeah. can actually work together to do this. Yeah, and this is this is to put this out in theaters. I mean, this yeah, isn't yeah. just a documentary. For no, Netflix. we need this it's to be a big Hollywood feature. success. And yeah. you know, so documentaries aren't always successful. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think this one will be. But it's a it's a lot of work to build a film like this. Yeah. You know. Is this your um, so was Carbon Negative your first film project? 
Uh, I've done a lot of other film projects, but this is the first um, award-winning film project I've done. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Was your background uh, someone in film as well? Or I, I don't know much about bit, your, yeah. your history. But what, well, how also, did you get into all this? Uh, you know what? I really wanted to go to UCLA. I couldn't get in. It was down my street because um, they were accepting foreign exchange students, and they were from China, and they actually all cheated on their SAT scores, and so. I was really upset with the academic system, um, and so instead of going to college, I sailed to Thailand. Wow. Yeah, and then awesome. I actually returned to uh, Hawaii Pacific University, where I studied business. Cool. And then I realized that you know what the world needs is an organization to um, look into solutions to these environmental problems. And then what I really saw is that the technologies existed to solve the world problems; but they just weren't being scaled out mm -hmm. to humanity. And, and People were really stuck on these commercial solutions that have been provided, and you know what the world is really looking for is to kind of get back into a, a more tribal, kind of project-oriented world. And so that that's why I really felt projects for good would be uh, essential. So cool. And so so if we if we put a project on projects for good, mm -hmm. um, should we do most of our own advertising? Let's say just for anybody that's watching this video, if they put a project on projects for good. Um, should they then scale through their social medias, or should they hire a marketer, or, or is that kind of like built in? Or yeah, I mean, it's, it's built it's, in. It's yeah. a crowdsourced platform. Essentially, it is crowdfunding, but it offers an opportunity for a facilitator to compete competitively on a bid. And like I said, the project owners can shift gears and facilitate new projects to scale those concepts out mm -hmm. to the world. So it has a news feed discussion blog. So you can get involved with experienced service providers and understand how to replicate these projects professionally. Some of them are very complicated, like removing landmines. You wouldn't want to do it the wrong way, you could get killed. You need the right equipment, the right experience, and that's one thing that you can get on projects for good. There's no one that's ever introduced um, a freelancer to a peer-to-peer -peer funding platform. Uh, so it's a first thing. It's kind of like we're introducing the hashtag in Twitter. You know, what is a hashtag? You know, that was some kind of a new thing. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah. Well, um, we just got a message that um, I think that you might be receiving an award or something, or, or, or like one of us or something. Yeah, yeah at five o'clock. Um, well, I, I'm really inspired um, by everything that you're yeah. doing, and, and I just found out right before this interview that he, I, I know of Global Mana. One of my friends actually worked with your project, yeah. and, uh, and the bread, bread fruit, right? yeah, bread fruit um, yeah. um, which is uh, a more sustainable form of, of food, just in general. Gluten-free, low glycemic. Yeah, and you guys were, flour were building right. shipping containers to create it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's so. I mean, I have my own projects, yeah. but it, you know, I, I really essentially thought it was so difficult to run a charity to beg for money to pay attorneys and accountants to file with the IRS. The IRS could come and just audit me and cause huge nightmares in my life. And essentially the web platform would eliminate the need for a, a charity mm -hmm. and they would be able to use our 501c3, which is the .org where we pass through money to match grants. I also saw that the world had the money to solve these problems, but the administrative costs were so high that people that really were doing water and food projects that met the goals of the SDGs uh, were not getting their matching grant. So I want to qualify people, get them started in their community so that they can receive matching grants. And I and it's, it's kind of like the bus that will never come waiting for the government or the United Nations. So projects for good, you can instantly uh, upload a project and start fund, you know, creating a, a platform for it. But also, um, I'd like to go to Washington, D.C. next week and meet with uh, the people that run the United the uh, SDG Fund and um, the United Nations Development, UNDP is what they call it, and I'd like to bring them hundreds of thousands of compelling projects, food, water, energy, basic human needs projects. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Um, well, happy to help any way that we can. Yeah, I'm definitely. I'm gonna um, put a project on there. Yeah, as well. And, definitely. Uh, I wish uh, my co-founder was here. She would. She would love you. And uh, and also maybe over time we can help integrate. I don't know if you're open to it, but uh, I know that you're not a huge fan of blockchain. But I think that um, there's a lot of younger generation that's made a lot of money, and that might be willing to fuel some of this. If, oh, absolutely. If, um, down, down the line. So well, it's not a fan about blockchain, but I think that um, what we do is it's almost a social cause platform and. 
you know, we don't need the blockchain software just yet, and we're only coming out with a version 1.0, so down the road we could have even our own wallet, mm -hmm. and we could exchange with digital currency and everything, but um, I think that it's actually kind of different. It doesn't, it doesn't really fit with our model. Our mm -hmm. model is more like social media, social cause oriented. Mm -hmm. I'd like to kind of op open up these discussion tiles where people can meet and talk to uh, experienced service providers, and, and I think it's a human interaction thing. Hmm. Um, and I think that uh, tracing money in, in blockchain is very interesting. But um, I'd like the blockchain community to work with us. Hmm. Uh, but I think that the most important thing is to have the people that know how to make change in the world on the platform and the projects that are really compelling to really start getting promoted on the platform, hmm. and it'll start. It'll take off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last quick question because you have to get inside. Uh, I, I used to live in Hawaii. I live in Oahu. Yeah. Live in Maui. Okay. But, uh, just got back from the Big Island. Nice. Favorite surf spot? Uh, oh yeah. Well, I, I've surfed all over uh, Hawaiian islands. You know, I lived on the North Shore for years. You know, of course, I've gotten some amazing ways of pipeline, but that's just the trendy spot. My favorite spot is the secret spot on the east side because there's uh, not Hawaii? that many people. Or, yeah, I surf by Pounders Beach. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever been to Pounders. Yeah. Um, Cool. Awesome. Um, Pounders. Yeah. I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, I'd love to surf with you sometime. Uh, where, where, you're based in California. Yeah, well, right? I, yeah, I go back to Hawaii too. Cool. Yeah. Are, are you in San Fran? Is that right? Palo Alto, yeah. Palo Alto. Yeah, yeah, just because we have really professional people there, Yeah. you know, that know how to build the web platform. So yeah. I, I have a good team there. Makes sense. They um, would all like to move to Hawaii though. Yeah, yeah, it's rad. I, ju I just saw the volcano. Um, it's really bad. Uh, I, we have volcano and tragic projects. At the same time. But no wet. Yeah. It's so cool. We, just, uh, we um, have a really good disaster relief project going. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So many cool projects. I want to hang out way longer. Uh, I just don't want to make him late for his award. Um, Patrick, yeah. uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, and definitely. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch. No, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and if you're in New York, um, I'm going next wanna, week. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, let me introduce you to we'll call you. Yeah, our whole community. Yeah. I mean, we'll, no worries. We'll get a lot of projects. Yeah, and actually, I've been working on this project for a long time now. <laughs> Which is wild. No, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So cool. It's, it's just wild how everything interplays. Yeah, he met the the guys that are planting the Earth flag on the North Pole. Before it was even the Earth flag, it was going to be a rainbow flag at first, and then, uh, and then this symbol came out in 2015. And so, um, yeah, and I'd love to find a way to integrate you into the International Day of Peace as well. So exactly, that's really important. We have a, a, pro a project for good, a whole yeah. station or something. Oh, absolutely, like that. It'd be, it'd be really fun. Totally. So, awesome. All right. Well, uh, good luck with your award, and uh, obviously I'll see you around. Um, thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Well, thank you, man. Cool. Dude, yeah. I've been working on this project for a long time. Yeah. Thanks.